Hello guys, Stan here and welcome back to Dan's Tech. Today guys, we're going to be having a look at this fanless cooler by Zamon. So this is the FX70, so a completely passive cooler which has no fans. So uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see how this performs on my i7. However, I will say I will also be testing this with an i3 and an i5 just to, just to see if this cooler is uh, you know capable of cooling kind of all three of them core processors by Intel. Now I am expecting this to cool an i7. It does claim it can, but I believe even at stock speeds, I don't think a 4770K will be able uh, to stay at kind of, you know, you know, shall I say good temperatures. Um, you know, these kind of a limit that you, you know, kind of don't want to go past. And I think any cooler without a fan, um, yeah, won't, won't be able to keep an i7 uh, cool. But uh, nevertheless, yeah, we're going to be, be having a look at this cool scene, kind of want it to get in the box. And yeah, then going to be going over some of the temperatures on an i7, i5, and i3. I will get into the specifics on them processors in a little while. And now, let's kind of get on to the unboxing and see what Salmon have included. So to get started inside the box, first off we found some accessories including all the mounting hardware for recent AMD and Intel sockets, an installation manual and one gram of Zalman's ZM-STG2M thermal grease. Now just a note on this grease, its conductivity rating is 4.1 so I would kind of recommend replacing this and grabbing some higher performance Arctic MX2 or MX4 thermal paste which do have considerably higher conductivity ratings at 5.6 and 8.5 respectively. Besides this cooler is going to use some pretty high temps with a fan so the better the thermal compound the better. Now onto the cooler itself upon picking it up it, it, it is very light for its actual physical size however it is quite sharp at the same time so do be cautious. Now the cooler comes in at just over half a kilo at 530 grams and as for the dimensions 15.8 centimeters in height 11 centimeters in length and 14 centimeters in width or depth depending on what country you're on and which kind of specifics you prefer there. Now as for the way the cooler has been designed, it has 15 aluminium fins and 6 polished heat pipes. Now these do raise to the top of the cooler and are spread out in a good even fashion to maximise the cooling potential. Now this is where it gets interesting, as this is a passive cooler and doesn't have a fan and that heat has to rise naturally uh, you know, to the top to dissipate, uh, you can see through the cooler at both the sides and also the top. Now this is quite different from most coolers where the fan is to push the air uh, from one side to the other and the fins in the cooler somewhat trapping the warmer air so the fan can blow the cooler air through it and you know effectively dissipate the heat in a nice and effective manner. Now the base material is a nice shiny base which has the mirror effect and a great thing with this is that if you wanted to use any kind of thermal paste uh, which is based on say liquid metal you can but to be honest I personally kind of stay, you know, stay away from them because you know these can conduct electricity or do shall I say and you know can damage your CPU or motherboard if you don't install them properly. Now I don't use these you know just for safety reasons of course but since I do test so many CPU coolers I just want to be on the safe side. There we are. Now onto the installation, the overall installation was okay, nothing too difficult but then by far not the easiest cooler to install in the world. The only real problems I had is that the cooler had to be installed in the orientation I didn't initially prepare for as the Corsair Virgins program that I have installed in my machine. It is quite tall and that did get in the way. Now, is it the responsibility of the cooler manufacturer or the, mam or the RAM manufacturer? Who knows, but thankfully you can install um, you know, coolers on LGA 1150 in any kind of orientation you want to as the socket holes are you know, in kind of a square pattern, not rectangular like some of the kind of older uh, sockets like say AM3 Plus from AMD. Now the second problem I had is screwing down the cooler. The screwdriver had to be at such an angle to screw the screws in. I really do think that this needs some work and does need to be redesigned in terms of you know, how it can be installed just a little bit easier. However, I did get it installed in the end and it's now time for the temperature tests. Now as I turn on my PC I did remember that I did have a 4 gigahertz overclock on on my uh, i7-4770K so I turned that off as I was reaching 50 degrees in the BIOS and as you guys know the BIOS is not a really, it isn't really a task for a CPU. So I dialed it down to 3.5 and I also as well as testing my i7 I did test an i5 from my mini ITX PC and also an i3. Anyhow let's kind of get on to them temperature graphs. So onto the temperature tests. Now I did test this on an open test bench with the room temperature being at about 19 degrees and do bear in mind yes a test bench is the, my PC on a motherboard box not inside of inside of like a test bench you know kind of case or anything like that. Now I did test the i7 4770K at 3.5 gigahertz, the i5 4460 at 3.2 gigahertz from my mini ITX PC and also an i3 
4170 at 3.7 gigahertz. Now do bear in mind the i3 has two cores, the i5 has four cores, and then the i7 has four cores with hyper-threading, so effectively it is eight. Now our idle temperatures very low, 32 degrees, 33 degrees, and 36 degrees. And then while playing Battlefield, just giving it kind of a gaming load, the i3 was at 57, the i5 at 59 and then the i7 at 63. And then for kind of a load test, I didn't want to run Prime 95 on a passive cooler. We're just doing a video render of my, um, uh, yeah, a video review for the cooler that I received from Arctic. The temperatures I got uh, while rendering was 65 for the i3, 67 for the i5, and 73 for the i7. There we are. Overall, I think the cooler is pretty damn good, and the temperatures are not that high, surprisingly. 70 degrees is kind of okay for an i7, but yet again, it's up to you what temperatures you want to run. Anyhow, let's kind of get on to the conclusion. So guys, there we are. This cooler by Zam on the FX70 can perform very, very well. And um, I do think that this is a good cooler because of the way it's been designed, you know, the fact that the air can rise to the top and the fact that, you know, it has got uh, a load of heat pipes. It's quite sharp, this actually. It's got six heat pipes there. Those I've kind of shown you already, but this, just because of the sheer design of this, I think that this is a good cooler to use passively. Now, I wouldn't use this on an i7. I would typically um, be kind of, you know, um, you know, pointing this at you guys if you have, say, an i5 or an i3. Um, for the AMD chips, you know, AMD chips do tend to get hot, same with their graphic cards. But if you have, say you've got, say, like the FX6 to 300 or, say, the 4 to 300, something like that, Feel free, uh, grab this. I'm pretty sure it'll do a good job. But, you know, for i7s and processors like, say, the 8350 by AMD, I really wouldn't put this on top of there because if you do do a little bit of rendering or do some heavy gaming, your processor is going to get very hot and, you know, without a fan, uh, you know, it can, you know, cool down. Now, this cooler is good. Um, now, I haven't tested today what, you know, other high end coolers are like, just, you know, just removing the fans. So, say for example, in the future, I might grab, uh, say, my uh, Dark Rock Pro 3, shove that on, and see what the temps are like uh, with the fans removed. Because I think that the design of this cooler um, allows uh, it, it to work without a fan, but, you know, we'll kind of see, won't we? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I would recommend this cooler. Um, all links will be in the description as uh, always. And yeah, without further ado, guys, thank you very much for watching, and yeah, I'll catch you in my next one. Goodbye.